Hey folks, real quick, this October, Daimler Coach is flying me out to Brussels, Belgium to check out Bus World, the world's largest bus expo. There's gonna be a few other cool things that's gonna happen while I'm there that I can't really divulge into yet, but I'm gonna be taking all of you with me right here on Motor Coach World, so don't mess it. All you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there, welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James, and by the way, don't forget to get your pack of bus cards today at buscards.net. Collect the whole fleet. Now, over the years, as I've openly shared my passion for buses, many people have told me, James, aren't they just big boxes on wheels? I mean, what could you possibly find so interesting about them? Well, while that's not entirely wrong, it is a huge oversimplification that completely overlooks all the incredible, intricate, and downright cool things that make a bus what it truly is. And one of those things is, well, how they look. I mean, let's face it, the engineers that design these things, they're all just playing with giant rectangles on wheels, but the magic is in the illusion, right? How do you make your rolling brick look like a sleek, modern marvel while your competitor out there is trying to make their rolling brick look even cooler than yours. It's like a fashion show, but with giant bricks and the dress you make has to withstand rollovers and impacts at high speeds. If you ask me, Vera Wang and Christian Dior have it easy compared to what these bus designers have to do as far as creating sex appeal. Just kidding, please don't sue. I'm just a bus geek with no fashion sense. Before we start talking about the sex appeal and the design of buses in today's video, we really need to go back in time a bit and talk about the early days of automobiles. Because after all, it was the first car, the Ford Model T, that Henry Ford rolled out in October of 1908 that started it all. Selling for $780 when it first hit the sales floor, which is about $26,300 in today's value, good old Henry was probably on top of the world. I mean, the man had just sealed his name in history as the inventor of the first mass-produced automobile. But that glorious moment, it was only temporary. Just seven years later, Louis Chevrolet and William C. Durant, the founder of Chevrolet, rolled out the Chevrolet Series 490. It was Ford's real competitor, and a strong one at that. The 490 was more sophisticated than the Model T, offering features like a more powerful overhead valve engine, a conventional three-speed transmission, and electric starting. It also launched with a price tag of $490. That price was even built into the name of the car as a direct challenge to Henry Ford's Model T. Of course, Chevrolet couldn't keep that price forever, and by 1921, the Chevrolet Series 490 had a price tag that was much different than its series number, up to $820. But even so, the Chevrolet Series 490 had already taken a huge chunk of the Model T's market share. Now, aside from the fancier tech and initially low price, there was another reason why people started ditching the Ford Model T for the Chevrolet Series 490, and that was curb appeal. The Series 490 just looked better. It had style, it had presence compared to the plain utilitarian Model T. The 490 was sexier and more refined. And just like that, curb appeal became one of the most important words in a car designer's playbook. But that's not the end of the story. And don't worry, I promise all this is leading towards the design of motor coaches. As cars evolved from the roaring 20s to the chrome-laden 50s, they weren't just machines anymore. They were becoming canvases. Designers weren't just building transportation, they were chasing legacy. Everyone wanted to design the next icon of the road. And in 1961, one man did just that. Wilhelm Hofmeister, the chief designer at BMW, debuted a new design element at the Frankfurt Motor Show, where the BMW 1500 made its first appearance. The car featured a subtle yet bold design cue meant to emphasize its rear wheel drive layout. 
a curve at the base of the rearmost pillar. That curve is now known as the Hoffmeister kink. It's a styling feature mostly found on sedans today, characterized by a forward-leaning angle at the base of the C-pillar. It became a signature of BMW's design, but over time, it popped up in one form or another across nearly every car brand. Well, almost every brand. There's one place you won't find the Hoffmeister kink, and that's on a Mercedes. Uhura? Nothing, Captain. Naturally, BMW's biggest rival wouldn't be caught dead using their signature move. Today, the Hoffmeister kink, or also known as the Hoffmeister curve, is a household term amongst car enthusiasts and auto designers. And funny enough, I only learned about it thanks to a fellow bus nut and fan of this channel, Jensen Plum and his dad, Ryan Plum, who just so happens to be a design engineer at Subaru. When Jensen and Ryan visit us here at Peoria Charter, Ryan didn't just bring a bunch of Subaru swag, which by the way, thank you Ryan and Jensen, we we're enjoying them very much. He also shared a wealth of car design knowledge with Albert, Kieran, and I. That conversation is what inspired me to make this video today. And now that you know about it, you probably won't be able to unsee the Hoffmeister kink. Every brand puts their own little twist on it. It's like a hidden signature, something quietly left behind by the designers to say, yeah, we were here. Now, one might think that bus design engineers have it pretty easy compared to automotive engineers. I mean, it's just a giant box on wheels, right? But that's where most people get it wrong. During an interview with Tolga Khan Dolganchelu, the former CEO of Temsa Coach at the 2022 UMA Bus Expo, he made a great point about bus design. Check out the uh, clip of the interview here. I am a mechanical sense? engineer. I've always worked in the uh, manufacturing design yeah, development yeah. side. Uh, so I ran a design engineering house for 13 Very years. Nice. So I was always into machines. It's goddamn multiple times easier, thousand times easier to design a sports car. Really? This is an art because sports car, the proportions, proportions yeah. are, give you large wheels, uh, the wind slick. Yeah. Okay, you have every opportunity to make. It's almost impossible uh, to design an ugly sports car, right? That's that's an art to yeah. design yeah, yeah. an ugly sports yeah. car. <laughs> but here, because space is so important to us, uh, it needs to have a rectangular shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we yeah, need yeah. to fit that many passengers. We need to uh, fit a lot of luggage space. So it is a lot challenging yeah. to design a bus a fashionable way than a sports car. So therefore I love it, it's a challenge. So aside from all the newer and fancier technology upgrades inside the modern motor coach, what is it on the outside that creates that sexy curb appeal? Well, until the mid 80s to early 90s, North American motor coaches mostly stuck to functional and practical designs, but it really wasn't fashionable. But somewhere in the early 90s, a trend started a subtle design element that spread across the industry. You could call it the Hoffmeister kink of the motor coach world. And the first time it showed up, it wasn't from the manufacturer, it came from a custom livery or paint design by a private coach company. Now this is where my research hit a bit of a dead end. So I did what any true bus nut would do. I started asking around retired drivers, old motor coach company owners, folks who lived it and the story began to line up. Now, I did try to reach out to a few motor coach manufacturers that get their side of the story. I figured the actual engineers themselves that designed and built these things would know a little about this, uh, this uh, little feature that I'm talking about. However, they were pretty busy and I didn't really wanna be a pest or bother them. But the few people that I spoke to all seemed to agree that the beginnings of this little design element started appearing on coach buses in the early 90s here in North America. The first sighting was from a retired Greyhound driver around 1993, who actually is a fan of the channel, and I reached out to him, and by the way, thank you very much for your time, and I'm gonna respect that you don't want your name mentioned, but after speaking to this kind gentleman, uh, he mentioned that when MTI first started producing the D-model coaches was when he first saw this. While driving down the interstate in his Greyhound, also a MCI D-model, he saw a bus from a different company go down the interstate heading the opposite direction. The driver said he had to do a double take as he had never seen a design quite like this before. 
It looked like an MCI DL3, but somehow different, more sleek. He had a hard time putting his finger on what it was that made it look so much more modern and different than his coach that he was running, because after all, it was the same exact make and model. Well, a few weeks later, while he was at a rest stop, that bus he saw just happened to pull in and park next to him. He realized what the difference was. The windows appeared to swoop down into the entry door and the driver's area. But when he looked closer, it wasn't the glass. It was only cosmetic, a paint job that created the sleek illusion. But either way, he thought it was a gorgeous look. And when he moved on from Greyhound to the next motor coach company he drove for, he described it to the owner of that company. And it wasn't long before that company started to do the same thing when they purchased a few new MCID models later that year. And all of a sudden, all the drivers wanted to drive those buses. They were known in his company as the new look. Now fast forward to 1994 when Prevo released the H341 Gen 1, an update from the H340. This time, the downward swoop wasn't just paint. The first passenger window was actually shaped with a diagonal bottom, creating a real sloped transition into the entry door and the driver's window. According to a second retired motor coach operator that drove for a different company that had these Prevos, this design element was quickly dubbed the Swoop. Then fast forward to 1998 when MCI introduced the E model or otherwise known as the 102 EL3 or also known as the Renaissance coach. MCI had integrated the downward curving windows on the new design. According to a retired owner of a small bus company out east, many in the industry believed that MCI had been inspired by those early painted liveries on the D models and finally made it real. Now folks, once again, please keep in mind all this is based on uh, first-hand accounts and stories from these kind folks who were willing to give me some of their time that worked in the motor coach industry in the 90s and 2000s. In August of 2023, MCI invited me to visit their factory in Winnipeg, Canada. During the tour of the factory, Brent Maitland, the previous vice president of private sector sales, referred to this downward curve design as the waterfall. So you were in, in, internally styling, we call this the waterfall. The waterfall. It falls from there to here. Yeah, yeah. All the Very sleek. And since then, I've heard the same term used by Prevo and Van Hool as well. Today, the waterfall has become the Hoffmeister kink of the motor coach world. Every manufacturer has their own version, their own curve, and their own stamp. Starting in 2023, the Volvo 9700 began outlining its waterfall by adding a gray or silver trim panel just below the window. And the Volvo, the 2025 Volvo, I noticed, now you guys call that the waterfall, where it dips, the yeah, windshield exactly. dips. Yeah, exactly. But now you guys, is that new, that trim, the that trim, silver trim piece that you guys added? The trim, the trim has been there for about a year now. Okay. And then, uh, again, you know, this is just bringing a little bit of a splash to the different models like between it. like 23, 24, and 25, you're right. A bold visual statement that this is their waterfall. The new 2024 and 2025 Prevo H series body style takes it a step further by adding a chrome insert to accentuate the waterfall. It makes a strong declaration that the waterfall starts here on the Prevo, then makes a sudden upwards angle towards the front edge of the passenger door or the driver's window. This entire design is formed by the actual glass of the front passenger window and the door, as well as the driver's side window. A big upgrade from the previous H-Series body style, which hadn't changed since 1994 when Prevo first introduced the H341 with the slanted passenger window. Now, Prevo's other model, the X345, doesn't have a true waterfall design at all. Instead, it uses a slight slant where the driver's window and passenger windows meet. That slant actually starts in the door and driver's area, creating the illusion that the front section is actually smaller than it really is. The 2025 Temsa TS45 has a unique take on the waterfall as well. It features a upward pointing tip on the second passenger window to mark where their waterfall begins. But the swoop itself isn't actually the glass. It's purely cosmetic once the waterfall drops below the window line. Its smaller sibling, the 35-foot Temsa TS35, uses a similar approach. The waterfall 
is smaller and again purely cosmetic no custom shaped glass here just a visual trick to achieve the effect while saving on production costs of having to make a whole separate shaped window adding another part number in their inventory uh, which uh, probably costs more to do uh, to make a window shape like that the 2025 Van Hool CX45 brings something different. Its front passenger window actually curves downward, creating a softer, more elegant waterfall. It feels closer in spirit to the MCI J models, where the curve begins at the front passenger window and continues seamlessly through the door and driver's window. Now, MCI's D series, the D45 CRT LE, mirrors its older predecessor, the DL3. There's no real waterfall here either, just cosmetic styling that give the illusion of one. And last but not least, funny enough, just like the Mercedes sedans, the Mercedes Tour Rider doesn't really have a waterfall at all. In its factory default paint scheme, there's a small black graphic, but if you look closely, the shape resembles more of a Chinese soup spoon than a flowing swoop. The design is purely visual and cosmetic, and the actual passenger window remains uniform until the very last piece of glass near the rear where there's a subtle upward angle. Folks, I did the best I could gathering personal accounts of when and how this waterfall trend started in the motor coach industry. And I wish I could have spoken to some of the original design engineers from some of the uh, manufacturers, but again, they were busy when I reached out to them and I really didn't want to be a pest by asking again. But this story doesn't really end here. The rest of the story is up to all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts. If you remember when these waterfall designs started popping up or you have your own stories or photos, please drop them down in the comments below or upload the photos onto Motor Coach World's Facebook or Patreon page. I would personally love to hear all of your recollections on uh, when you noticed this design started to happen or any additional facts that you may have on this waterfall design. So thank you again for watching today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world. <laughs>